you're about to enter a place where time and space are no longer what you think they are, and the laws of physics no longer bind us to this plane of rational being. <laughs> nah, it's just dev tips. This is our 7.1 in a series I call Design and Code My Personal Website in 12 Hours. Today we're going to dive right into the mentoring section. Now, this section turned out to be a little bit more complicated than I had planned, mostly due to the way that I handled the testimonial section and then made that work on mobile. But those are covered in the next few days in hours 7.2 and 7.3. Today we're going to do the markup and style for this section. So let's get into it. Let's start by looking at our Photoshop file and taking a look at what we're going be building today. So we've already built the introduction or the hero shot and the YouTube section. Today we're going to be building this mentoring section. So uh, a little word about mentoring. A while ago I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have just like one-on-one -on -one conversations with people and so I gave out, I think it was 20 or so uh, free mentoring sessions where you know, they're just phone calls uh, between 15 and 20 minutes and just talked with people about uh, what they're going through, uh, maybe some insights that I've had uh, along the way. And they turned out to be really, really good. I really enjoyed them. And so did the people that I had conversations with. They seemed to enjoy them. So what I did is I, just, I asked them to, um, you know, give a testimonial in return. And then I would start to build up this kind of... Uh, idea that it's something that I could possibly do. So uh, so this is the mentoring section and what I have here is uh, very similar to the sections above it, right? There's a there's the lead paragraph here and then there's a call to action. Similar, there's a lead paragraph right here, just uh, four words in this case, and there's a call to action. Um, the background here is a telephone, <laughs> it's actually funny, um, um, this this photograph is, uh, I, I called Los, my uh, po a podcast co-host, and then I put the phone down and waited for him to answer it, and then I took a picture of him, and then I just kind of hung up on him because I just needed the photograph. I didn't want to talk to him. And he was like, why'd you, why'd you call me? Why'd you call me? Uh, anyway, so what I have here is um, a bunch of faces in, a, in the first column and then the, uh, the lead paragraph in the second. And I wanted to think, you know, this would be like a, a something that people could, you know, click on one of these faces and then a new paragraph would show up or a new like testimonial bubble would show up. And, and I don't really have a clear idea of how the, the interactions will happen. Um, all I was thinking that it would just be like a kind of like a, you know, kind of like a carousel or something like that. Maybe it'd be, uh, yeah, anyway, so we're going to get to that when we, when we get to it. So, but right now let's get started. These are two columns that are centered together. We don't want them to float a, a, away like they do in the YouTube section. So um, the, the best thing to do right now is just to create the files. So let's go in here to our Jade files like we do and create a new file. And we're going to call this one uh, mentoring, uh, section mentoring, dot mentoring dot jade. And that's going to be our first file that we're going to be working with today. Um, let's go into that the columns uh, file and grab these first eight lines. These are the columns that we want, right? They're flex, center, two columns. We already talked about what that means in the other videos. Um, and now that we have the section mentoring Jade, we need to open up our uh, we need to open up our index and add the section mentoring to the index file so it'll show up after the YouTube. So uh, mentoring, and then it should show up here, but it'll look like just another column set right here. Okay. So let's go into mentoring and not say section dot other thing, but call it mentoring. Okay, and now we need to go in and create uh, some some SAS. Let's go into sections and create new file. Call it underscore mentoring dot SAS. Is that how we're labeling the other ones? Oh, none of these other ones have underscores. Well, let's fix that. Just real quick. I'll fast forward this. All 
we're going to add home dot mentoring. And then we're going to go into section mentoring and say uh, section dot mentoring. I'm going to say background pink. And I just do this just to make sure that all of the pieces are connected. So if I hit save here on right here, this these two paragraphs will turn pink. Save. Something's wrong. What could it be? Okay, I need to start my server again. Something something broke. Something broke my server. Oh, mentoring. Okay, so the thing that's broken is I didn't name this correctly. So look at all these other sections. They have home dash. Mentoring needs to be renamed to home dash mentoring. Then save. And now I have a pink two columns. Everything's connected. Everything is awesome. We have a section dash mentoring Jade and a home dash mentoring SAS. And that is that is exactly what we want. Okay, so we've turned it pink. We've validated that this works. We can get rid of that. Let's look at the Photoshop file and see what we're supposed to be building. Uh, the first thing is easy enough, just that background, right? Background. Uh, image, we have it here is the image uh, mentoring BG, this thing. So URL mentoring dash BG dot, is it probably a JPEG? I can't remember. And let's Give that a save. Okay, there we are. And uh, we need to just do some size here. Uh, co cover and position uh, center. Eh, just your standard fare so far. Okay, now let's look at these first two columns. We're gonna have the second column here be the one with the uh, the lead and stuff. Let's just open up. Let's open up um, YouTube section youtube.jade basically this stuff is what i want to just duplicate really quickly i'm going to close that out okay and it's going to be right here uh okay cool that looks good um this content of it is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be called uh, Mentoring People Like You. And uh, the CTA is going to be called Schedule a Call. I don't have a link for that yet. I need to build that internal page. So we'll just leave it blank for now. And let's grab some colors. So the color of this text is that. And the lead is going to be white. So color. Mm. OK, that's all white. And then uh, what's this thing called again? the home CTA, home CTA, color is that, with a hash in front of it. Cool, uh, looks, looks really good. Let's look at our Photoshop file. Now we have, we have the two columns here on the left are all the faces and on the right uh, are, are columns, but it's pushed down a fair bit. Mm, let's worry about that later. So let's fill this first column with faces. Get rid of this paragraph here. And you know this would be a good uh, this would be a just a good unordered list, right? So UL, we'll call it faces. And then each one of these is going to be a list uh, with a class of face. And um, the background of the face is going to be declared actually in the markup. 
the image of the face is going to be declared in the markup. So I'll say background dash image is equal to URL like that. And we'll use HTTP fillang.com slash uh, I don't know how big do these things look if they are here let's see uh, looks like it's about 80 let's do 80 bit uh, 80 wide and 80 tall um, that's for the image and then and then we have to have so like we'll okay so we need to have a space for this bubble and we'll nest that bubble inside of the face container. It'll be a child. Ooh, look at my beard, it's cool. Um, we'll do that like, like this. How about, how about something like this, bubble. And inside the bubble are gonna be the paragraphs. And let's just grab this paragraph here. And then adjacent to that, like a, like a sibling of the, the paragraph, is going to be another element. Let's say, like, who is this from, right? Uh, Nathan Jacobs at this point. Okay. Nathan Jacobs. Okay. And then we're going to do, it looks like one, two, three, four, like six of these things. I'm going to uh, capitalize on Jade right now. Jade has this awesome feature called Mixin, and a Mixin allows you to just make repeatable kind of modules that are like really simple and easy to use. So I'll just cut all this content right here and go above and, and say, you just write the word Mixin. And I'll just call this one face, because each one is a face. And then you can have parameters in there, like URLs and names and stuff. And we'll, we'll get to that later. But right now, I just want to have this markup being able to be repeated. So I have the mix-in face right there. And I'll just say plus uh, face. And I'll do that six times. Two, three, four, five, six. Now I should have six faces, six paragraphs. And it should work pretty easily easily okay looks like looks like it worked right but we need to do a whole lot of styling to this to make it work right so let's jump over to our styling home mentoring sas file that's what we're talking about and um, faces uh, first of all I want to take see these little these little bullet points here that's because they're in a list so I'll just remove that list style it is none Moves the bullets there. Okay, and then let's take a look at these faces. You know, actually, first let's just get rid of, let's just get rid of this bubble, and just deal with that later, right? For now, I want to style just each face. So I'll say dot face, and your height is going to be, we said 80 pixels, and your width will be the same. 80px, and so now we have some dimension there. We just have a really awesome Phil Murray looking good, buddy, looking good. Uh, let's take that border uh, radius and make it 50%. Make turn these all into circles. And now I can I can rely on Phil, Bill Murray, Phil Murray, Bill Phil Bill. Uh, I can rely on his dimension being 8080 because that's what I asked for specifically. But when I pull in avatars from you know everybody who gave quotes uh, from like Twitter or Google Plus or wherever I get them from. I can't trust that they're going to be eighty eighty. So let's make sure to to get a, a stranglehold on on the on the background sizes here. Let's say uh, background uh, size is cover and position would be center. That looks good. Now they need. Uh, some space below them. So we'll say margin, margin uh, bottom, uh, about, let's say, uh, 35 pixels below. How about this box shadow? 
Uh, and it looks like on the Photoshop file they have a box shadow. Uh, let me tell you what it is. For, for offset vertical, um, it's a got a blur of 8 and an opacity of 40. So that's 0px, 4px, 8px, and uh, RGB A000. Oh, you go over there. 000, uh, 0, 0, 0.4. And then they have the back drop shadow. Great. And now you can see in the Photoshop file that there's some space above where this bubble can kind of like head into the other section. Um, so let's what? Well, let's just measure that really. How much space does it need to have it? Height 284. So it's 280 minus the um, the 50 pixels of padding that the uh, that the section gives us is like what 230. Uh, yeah, 230. So we'll go in here to not home CTA. We'll go into your. Ooh, it's called home lead, right? And say margin top. It's two, no, 250 pixels, and that's right here. Oh, I call these things just lead, lead, but they should be home lead. Like, what if I want to use the, the, the class of lead on an internal page somewhere? Not on the home, you know? So let's scope these down. Where did I put lead? Oh, I got this outdented here on. Uh, it's in the um, in the base section, but this is like these are home specific files uh, styles. So I'm going to take these and move them actually, and move them onto the home section. We can make a little section called uh, the home the home layout style. We can make a section in that file called typography, and put it all there. And I want to prefix lead with home, home lead. And then we can go into all of the uh, the shades and put home lead. And I, it sounds like a little pedantic, I know, but I think it's better uh, for a lot of reasons. Let's open youtube.jade and put home lead there as well. Home lead, like that. And then about dot jade and say home lead. Okay, that's gonna be better in the long run because that lead concept is not gonna sneak into subsequent pages because it's home lead. Let's style the bubble, right? So go into the bubble and we'll just grab one of the bubbles uh, right here. What I did was I added a, a, a long form HTML am, amongst all the mix-ins. That way I can edit this one specifically because all of the bubbles are hidden right now. And I want to take one of the um, one of these faces and kind of open the bubble. So here's a face, and I'll write a, a class of has a bubble open. Yes, and then now I can go into the SAS and say bubble, and then uh, write something like phase dot has bubble open, and say display block. Are you there? Are you displaying blocking? Has bubble open face nope face bubble and then and then write bubble okay so okay all right so this the third one has a face okay so the third face here has a class of has bubble open and the child bubble has display block, which is fantastic. Now we can style it. Right, the first thing we need to do, obviously, it's all it's all cramped up in the position, or sorry, the dimensions of its parent, right? We need to release it 
let's make it position absolute because we need to float it all up up and off to the um, off to the right see how in the design here's the face but it's like kind of off to the right here so lo, 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 face bubble position absolute and in order to do that we need to have a position a relative on the parent which is face so position absolute we want it to be pushed to all the way to the right right so let's take the left and say 100% and that will push it from the left all the way out like that and then once we've done that we can put some margin left left and just move it a little bit more out maybe just another little little five pixels right there now the the we want to move it up as well you see the design here how the 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 foundation of the bubble is in the middle of the face so what that means is it will go not push it all the way up up like we did the left we'll push it up halfway and we'll start at the bottom and move up 50%. See that? Now it's starting there and going up. But it's still maintaining the, uh, the, the dimensions of its parent, right? It's just 80 pixels wide. So let's change that by making this bubble, making this bubble wider. We want it to be 300 pixels. Okay, great. Now it looks like a usable paragraph. It certainly, certainly does. And we'll do the obvious things, right? Like uh, background black. Okay, not exactly black. RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.9. Yeah, now you can see things from below it. Let's say 0. 0.8. Yeah, that's good. Get a padding of 20. And this is going to be fun. Border radius. See this one here has uh, on the design the really thick border radius is right here, and then the apex of the bubble that's pointing to the face is, is a little bit smaller. So the way you can do this, you can do this all in uh, the uh, like a what is it like a shortcut? Not a shortcut. Shorthand uh, for the border radius, and you're going to start at the top left and then you go top right, bottom right, bottom left. So the top left, top right, and bottom right are all gonna be the same radius of like 20 pixels, something like this. I could have measured the design, but it's my design. So do what I want, I'll do what I want, and then like three pixels. Okay, maybe like five pixels. Maybe these 20s are a little bit more like 30s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe these 30s are a little bit more like 40s than we thought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's a stroke around the... Oof, the, what are these? These are more like 50s or something. There's a, there's a stroke around this thing, and it's a white stroke. Uh, call it border. Uh, two pixels, solid, white. Boom, 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 four. Mm, too much. Three. Ooh, baby bear, just right. Good. Uh, let's move it a little bit further away from that, from the face. So how about ten pixels? Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, now the face is, this is the, the face is, is the UL. I need to see, let me turn it pink for you guys so you can see what I'm looking at here. I'm noticing that the faces have a problem, and it's similar problem to what we faced right here, where these, I wanted in the design, uh, See how these faces go all the way to the edge of the colored section area, and so do these uh, these thumbnails. Now, um, 
the way we did it with the thumbnails is to use um, negative margins and, and control the height. And we're going to do something very similar with these faces now. So we'll go to the faces, which is, remember, that's the, um, that's the unordered list. And we'll say faces, what are we going to say? Um, margin, negative 50 for the top and bottom, and zero margin for the right and left. And then for the height, we're going to say we want you to be uh, calculate this. Calc this 100% plus 100 pixels, right? Because we're 100, each of these um, top and bottom margins, we need to make up for actual content size. We're, the reason we put negative is, is so we can overcome the padding that's inherent to each of these sections that we put on all the sections by default. And once we've overcome that, we have a really short and small uh, faces UL, you, yeah, an order list, and we want to compensate for the negative margins by just stretching that thing out 100% of the height plus the 100 pixels that it loses from having negative margins. Does that make sense? Well, it should because I just hit save, and that's what it looks like. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Now I can have this kind of, I mean, look at it. It's perfect, right? Look at how, uh, you know, this mentoring section there's a this, uh, lead, the words, the headline, I forget, all the, I forget all my language right now. La, la, la. Okay, these words are positioned really well to work with um, this balloon. Why are these guys off to the right? It's faces. Mmm, I see what you did. It was it was a, because it's UL. It had like inferred padding on there, so I had to get rid of it. Gone. Okay. Earlier, I said that only the um, bubbles that have uh, this style on of what was it is open or something has bubble open. Why don't I just change that a little bit to um, hover? So I can show you what it looks like when you're going to be like mousing over all these other ones. I want them to show up, right? Pop, 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 pop. So let's do a little bit of a like a pop, pop, pop transition. And how are we going to do that? So we'll go down here to the hover and say not be display um, block and display none. We'll change that to opacity. Uh, opacity one and change this display none to opacity uh, zero. And a part of changing something from opacity zero to opacity one is you have to keep in mind that it's opacity doesn't knock it out of the DOM like display none does. Display none will will remove it from the DOM. Uh, it will it will still uh, you'll still be able to click on things if it's even if it's opacity zero you can still highlight all that text. So we have to use another CSS declaration that makes that makes the thing unclickable, and that's called pointer events none. Now that will mean that you cannot click on it, you cannot highlight any of the text that's in it, you can't do anything to it. Your mouse doesn't even know that it's there. Uh, so we're going to transition that to all um, like you know over the course of 1.3 seconds or something and it's going to be ease in out and I'm going to save that nothing looks like it changed but now when I hover over things it won't be just that like pop 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 it'll be more like a shoo 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 so here's here we go shoo shoo Maybe 1.3 or 0 0.3 is a bit fast. Let's try two. How about one? I like two better. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Sorry. Um, how about uh, how about this? 
we're not only going to uh, transition the opacity, but we're going to do transform scale. And we're going to take it from 0, and we're going to make it pop, pop, pop. Transform scale uh, to 1, right? Now it's going to go pop because it's a bubble. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Uh, I like that, but it's popping from the wrong place, right? The bubble needs to come up. So we have this transform. We have to use another declaration called transform-origin. And that we want it, where do we want it to come from? We want it to come from the bottom and the left. Come out like he's talking like this. Uh, so we'll say bottom left. Are you ready? Let's click it. Let's, let's hover it. Boom. Boom. Everybody. So it's coming from the bottom left like I want it to. Looks pretty good. But we can make it look more bubbly. So right now it's just a linear. But what if I want it to be like like a like a bubble? Like a huh? I don't. I'm sorry. I'm not making much sense right now. But let me show you what I mean. So, if I uh, mouse in here in my inspector and I find the bubble, I can see that the ease out, ease in out is like the normal name for things, right? If I click that, I have this is in Chrome DevTools. I have this really awesome graphical user interface, a way for me to edit the Bezier curve of the easing property of this transition. Are you with me? Let me show you what I mean. I can grab these little handles right here and actually make new easings. So instead of it going shwoo, right now it'll go shwoo. See that little bubble? Pop, pop, pop. And that's just because if you can draw a box here, see this? I'm going to draw a box there. See how this top, I'm trying to point to it. You see the top? Uh, you see the top here, how it was going out of the box? That means it was actually going to get bigger than the scale which we said would be ending at 1. So it's going to go like, you know, 0, start at 0, and it's going to go up to like 0 0.2, 0 0.35, and then like, then it's going to go 0.1, and then 0.1.2, right? Bigger than 1, and then back down to, right at the, at the end of this scale, it's going to go, it's going to end at 1. So it's actually like popping out like this. Pop, pop. Well, you can do other things like this. Like, look at this one. It's going to go really fast in the beginning, and then really slow. Boo, boo. Wow. See, how's that? Wow. Here's another version of that. It goes really slow in the, in the beginning and then really fast at the end. Pa, pa. But I like the bounce. Dwing, dwing. Uh, let's do. Is that too much? Too much bounce right there. Let's try to make it a little bit less but still respect the bounce. That looks good. Okay, so now that we have that Bezier, we need to translate that back to our code, of course. So let's grab this code right here at the bottom of the radar. Oh, wait, can I just, okay, it's here. Grab that, copy, and go into here in our code where it said ease in out, take that keyword out, and literally paste in that uh, cubic Bezier curve. Now these are the plot points on the x, y that give us that curve that goes outside. Save that. And now we got the bounce. Shwa, 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 shwa. See? Looks good, looks good, right? OK, here's a problem. These balloons are going outside of the mentoring section. So let's jump on up back to here, the mentoring section, and say over flow hidden I'll be and now the balloons will not pop out and now you'll say hey but Travis how could I even read these if they popped out well we're gonna do that with JavaScript all right, well, this seems as good a place as any to stop, and we will come back tomorrow for our 7.2, where we're going to be doing all that fancy 
JavaScripting to make this functional. And what fun that will be. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd like you to consider becoming a patron of DevTips. These people did, and they are more awesome for it. It's true. Patrons enjoy back rubs and smoothies, and they also get to watch these videos early, and we have private patron hangouts. Learn more at patreon.com slash devtips, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow for our 7.2, and until then, keep on hacking.